This video goes over a number of new definitions. This is all still about describing transformations and getting information about transformations out of a matrix. And all of this is useful terminology. It's the language that mathematicians have developed to talk about matrices and transformations, to describe behavior, to classify the kinds of things that transformations can do. So let me just jump in here. Consider an M by N matrix, a matrix with M rows and N columns. This matrix represents a transformation from our N to our M. The dimension of the domain always matches up with the number of columns, and the dimension of the output always matches up with the number of rows. I already have the definition of rank from before. Rank is the number of leading ones in the reduced row echelon form. The row space of a matrix is the span of the rows. Each row can be thought of as a vector in Rn. They are a set of vectors, so I can consider their span. And likewise, the column space is the span of all the columns. Each column can be considered a vector in Rm. The columns are a set of vectors, so I can consider their span. The dimension of the row space is equal to the rank. This matches what we did last week. To understand the dimension of a span, I put the vectors into the matrix as rows. I reduce, and then I count the leading ones. And the number of leading ones is the dimension. So for the span of the rows, I put the rows in as rows of matrix, but that's what they already are. There's nothing to do here. The dimension of the span of the rows is just the rank, the number of leading ones. I'm not going to prove it here, but the dimension of the span of the columns is also the rank. This is much less obvious from what we've said so far in the course. In fact, this is pretty surprising. But it is in fact true. In the previous video, I defined image. The image of a subspace is what the subs where the subspace goes under the transformation. The image of a transformation of the matrix itself is the range of the transformation, all possible outputs. How do I calculate this? Well, Rn is the span of the standard basis. And I know how matrices act on spans. The output is the span of the new vectors I get by using the matrix on the original spanning vectors. So the image of everything should be the span of M acting on EI, the vector acting on the standard basis of Rn. What happens when the matrix acts on these spanning vectors? Well, I'm going to demonstrate this by an example. This is, of course, not a proof, but this is a lot easier to see with specific numbers in a specific matrix. Here is the 3x3 three three matrix acting on the standard basis of R3. What does it do to the first ax axis vector E1? 1, 0, 0. Well, I do the matrix action, going across the rows of the matrix and down the vector. And each time I multiply by the first entry by 1, the second entry by 0, and the third entry by 0. And the result is just the first entry of the row. So the output is negative 2, 7, 4. Everything else is multiplied by 0. What do I get? I get the first column of the matrix. Well, what about acting on the second axis vector, E2, 0, 1, 0? Well, if I go across the rows and down the vector, the first and third terms are all 0, and the process only picks up the second term. The output is negative 2, negative 3, negative 1, the second column. Finally, acting on E3, 0, 0, 1, gives the third column in a similar way. And feel free to check all the matrix actions yourself to make sure. The result is that the output MEI just gives the columns of the matrix. I showed this by example, but this is true in general. Therefore, the image is described by the span of the columns. And I just gave that a, that a term, a name, the column space. The image of the matrix is the same as the column space of the matrix. This is yet something else I can get out of the matrix that describes something important about the transformation. Let me move on to yet more definitions. I defined image last video. The image of something is where it goes under the transformation. A very similar term is pre-image. Again, let M be an M by N matrix, which is a transformation from our N to our M. And let u be an rm, that is, u is a vector in the target space, the space of outputs for the function. A preimage essentially asks the opposite question to image. 
Image says, where does the thing go? Pre-image asks, what points in the domain end up here? What goes to this? It starts with a target and asks what ends up there. The notation is m to the negative 1 of u. And you'll notice this is a little bit like the matrix inverse notation. This is a bit confusing. Some of this is like the action of the inverse matrix, but not always. And it's a bit poor notation because of this confusion. But again, it is standard. The pre-image of u is everything that gets sent to u. It can be a single vector, or perhaps a whole line or a plane, if the matrix is a projection that sends many points collapsing down to a single point. However, the pre-image can also be empty. Maybe nothing at all goes to you. Now let me ask about a very special pre-image. Same setup, m is still an, an m by n matrix, a transformation from Rn to Rm. I know that linear transformations preserve the origin. The origin must always go to the origin. But I can also ask, what else goes to the origin? What other vectors get sent to zero? What is the pre-image of the zero vector in the target space? The kernel is the name for this. The kernel of a transformation is everything that gets sent to zero, the pre-image of the zero vector. The notation is as before, m to the negative one of zero. And this zero, of course, is the zero vector, not the zero number. How do I calculate pre-images and kernels? Well, like everything else in this course so far, there is a matrix algorithm to do this. If u is a vector in the target space, the pre-image of u is the solution space of the extended matrix I get when I add u as a column to the matrix M. This is just like solving systems, and again, row reduction solves this for me. I can get a description by parameters, which will be an offset span if I write it as a vector equation. For the kernel, the target is the zero vector, so the kernel is found by calculating the system where all the constants are zero. Why is this so? Why are pre-images connected to systems of equations? This is a very subtle and tricky thing, but let me try and explain it. I'll do so by writing out the situation just in two variables. Let's say I have a target vector x0, y0. I want the pre-image. That is, I want all vectors x, y that are sent to x0, y0. Let me apply the matrix action across the rows of the matrix and down the vector. Across the first row, I get ax plus by. And this needs to be the first component of the x output, x0. Across the second row, I get cx plus dy. And this needs to be the second component of the output, why not? But this is just two equations. A system of equations in the unknowns x and y. I can write down the matrix for this system. And this matrix is just the original matrix and the targets as the constants. And this is what I said. The pre-image is the solution space for the system I get with the matrix extended by the target vector. All that we've been doing for the last three or four weeks, it's all so deeply interconnected. Matrix and row reduction keep showing up over and over again. Loci and spans are the same things, just different descriptions. Images and column spaces are the same. And now, systems of equations are somehow the same thing as pre-images. I don't know how you are handling all these definitions, but hopefully, maybe after the activities and the assignment, all these definitions start to fit together into a puzzle to form a picture of this strange discipline of linear algebra. When I think of a system of equations, I can leave it just as that, just as a system. But now, thinking of geometry and transformation, I can also think of it as a pre-image. I can reinterpret it. This course is full of interpretation and reinterpretation. This makes it very challenging, of course, all these interpretations and reinterpretations build on top of each other. But it also makes it elegant and rich and beautiful to see all the ways that the definitions fit into each other to make this remarkable tapestry.